Hello, everybody. Let's join together for our time of uh, devotion and reflection and prayer today. Uh, I'm coming to you today from one of our local coffee shops uh, so that I can upload this uh, so that we can spend this time together. We start our time together with Psalm 42, verse 1. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. Let's take just a moment to invite the Holy Spirit to help us reflect completely upon God in these moments. Our scripture for today comes from the book of Ruth, chapter 2, selected verses, starting at verse 1. Now Naomi had a kinsman on her husband's side, a prominent rich man of the family of Elamech, whose name was Boaz, jumping to verse 3. So she went, she came, and she gleaned in the field behind the reapers. As it happened, she came to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elamech. Then Boaz said to Ruth, Now listen, my daughter, do not go to glean in another field or leave this one, but keep close to my young women. Keep your eyes on the field that is being reaped and follow behind them. I have ordered the young men not to bother you. If you get thirsty, go to the vessels and drink from what the young men have drawn. Then she fell prostrate with her face to the ground and said to him, Why have I found favor in your sight that you should take notice of me when I am a foreigner? But Boaz answered her, All that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told me, and how you left your father and mother and your native land and came to a people that you did not know before. May the Lord reward you for your deeds, and may you have a full reward from the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. In this particular book uh, is one that is often lifted up as an example of love. And it is also an example of generosity, is, is an example of caregiving, uh, and it is an example of what it means to go through grief, uh, anger, frustration, uh, depression, withdrawal, uh, bitterness, and then a reframing of life. In the passage that we've got here, uh, we find Ruth and Naomi in need of food, and the uh, expectation of the edges of the field not being harvested so that those who are in need can come and glean uh, for themselves. We have a short reference to uh, what is potentially a danger for young women who go and glean the edges of the field from some of the male harvesters. Uh, but then we also find Boaz going, you know, I've heard what you're doing for, my, for Naomi, and I have, uh, I've heard of where you have come from and what you have given up in order to take care of uh, Naomi. And I want to make sure that you have what you need. It's an incredible story. And one that often gets overlooked uh, because many folks just want to focus on the loving aspect of it. But there's so much more that is happening here. There's not a relationship between Boaz and Ruth uh, other than Boaz's generosity for Naomi and Ruth. Uh, and to have reached a state where you need to find help. Uh, our country, unfortunately, in the United States, uh, has placed a stigma on those who are uh, in need. We make it something to be embarrassed about. 
Um, and people can often be looked down on because they are in need of assistance. Yet here we have in Scripture Ruth and Naomi not being looked down on at all, but rather as an example of it's an opportunity to live out our faith and belief in what God has called us to do in caring for our neighbor, even before Jesus spelled it out so succinctly. It's an expectation of our belief and interaction and reaction to God's generosity for us. And I can't stress enough the importance it is for us to understand. There are times when people are in situations not of their own design, and they are in need of help. And it isn't for us to lord over anyone the fact that we can help. It is just an explanation of this is what we're called to do. And we want to make sure that you are provided for. Plain and simple. No give and receiving of anything here, just offering. And so we can see for Ruth a, a little bit of confusion. Uh, why would you do this? I'm a foreigner. I'm a I don't belong here. And Boaz says, you are welcomed. And you are wanted. And you have expressed the best qualities of what we who follow God are expected to show. And you do indeed belong. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what you dress as. It doesn't matter who your ancestors were. God desires a relationship with you. And God has called us to accept everyone into a relationship. Just my reflections on the passage for today. Let's go ahead and move forward to our time of prayer. Oh dear. Yeah. 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 I'm having some trouble getting the uh, screen to change. Let's pray. Almighty God, we pray today for healthy seeds and soil so that all people may receive what is necessary for life and a good, abundant life. We pray for those who bring food to all people, to our tables from the growers, farmers, harvesters, grocers, truck drivers, and yes, even the governments that enable this to happen. Loving God, you protected and took care of Ruth and Naomi, and you protect and take care of us. We are like little birds, safe under your wings. We are your children. We belong to you through Jesus Christ, our true reward. Amen. And our benediction and blessing for today comes from Psalm 32, verse 1. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. I want each of you to remember that you are a child of God, made in the image of God, and loved beyond measure by God. And we who follow Jesus love you too. May we all grow in that love. Until next time. Bye.